scientists who studied behavior, folks like Nico Timbergen and Conrad Lorenz, spent their careers carefully observing animal behavior in the natural environment and intuitive that behavior is divided into parts. But it's hard for humans to communicate the process that they use to understand things like behavior. We wanted to find ways to really objectify human intuition. The ultimate goal is to understand how the brain creates behavior. To my knowledge, nobody has ever tried to model the full 3D pose of the mouse as it evolves over time. Because how your pose changes over time, that is behavior. We developed a method that allows us, through machine vision and machine learning techniques, to identify the structure of behavior itself as it unfolds. So in other words, is there a grammar to that body language? We recorded the mouse's posture just using a Microsoft Connect, and then we had this beautiful depth stream that we were able to, uh, to use to build a 3D model of the mouse's body. We can now pretend like that data stream is just spoken language. And so we can feed it to algorithms that we ordinarily use to discover the parts of speech in some foreign language. And what we do is we try to discover what the syllables are or the repeated motifs of action are inside of that data stream. I developed the mathematical models that define what the syllables are and tell the computer how to find them in the data. We sort of take all those video frames and put them on top of each other so we can watch all the videos at once and it looks like they're doing very different things, then all of a sudden they'll snap together and they'll perform some specific kind of motion that's very stereotyped. Every way that we looked at the data, once we finally had it, it was clear there was an enormous amount of structure that people just hadn't described before. These brief three-dimensional motifs of action, we saw that there was a kind of uh, almost rhythm to the way that mice behave. About every 300 milliseconds, they seem to be switching to doing something else. The average lab mouse's syllables can enact all the behavior that we see. All kinds of little pieces that are too fast for a human observer watching the mouse to say, ah, that is a repeated motif of behavior. So for example, like a mouse uh, might sniff or dart or rear up into the air or bunch up into a ball. My favorite syllable is the, the hunting dog syllable, where the mouse is on four legs and stretches out and then raises its nose. I think, just think that's really cute. <laughs> My favorite syllable is the run force run syllable, where the animal darts across the arena as fast as he can. If you give the mouse, say, fox odor, what we found is that the mouse doesn't actually use any new syllables to avoid the fox odor. The mouse just reorganizes existing syllables. And through simply changing the way syllables are expressed over time, the animal can generate completely new behaviors. It's like in spoken language, there's only a small set of sounds we can make, but we can combine them together in an incredible amount of ways to produce spoken language. We then did an experiment about the influence of genes on behavior. In a genetic mutant, which has a, a funny duck walking gait, what people hadn't described is that the heterozygous mutant, so uh, a mouse with only one incorrect copy of the gene, was also different from wild type. And discovering an abnormality in a heterozygous mouse is really important because a lot of psychological illness that has a genetic underpinning in people shows up as a heterozygous mutation. And the main reason we undertook this project was to better understand how the environment, genes, or activity in neural circuits influences different patterns of action. We're trying to bring the tools that can measure behavior up to the same resolution of the tools that can measure the brain activity that creates that behavior. And so this is an unprecedented sensitivity into uh, behavior that hadn't existed before.